Scarlet. I have to go after them. But you don't know how to fly a pod ship. I... I, 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 can, I can figure it out. I'll, I'll download instructions. I... Your friend is dying. Her attention spun to Wolf, surrounded by blood. Oh, no. Oh. Th- Thorn. We, we need to get Thorn. Then we can go after Scarlet and... Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll bandage Wolf. Give me your shirt. Her gift easily brought his fingers under her command, and he handed her his own bloodied shirt. She bunched it against Wolf's wound. Thor- where's Thorn? What did you do with Thorn? Your friend who boarded the satellite... He's dead. You're lying. Mistress Sybil changed the satellite's trajectory, removing it from orbit. It'll burn up during entry. It probably already has. There's nothing you can do. No, she wouldn't sacrifice her own programmer. She... She would sacrifice anyone to get to you. The Queen seems to believe you are a threat. This is all my fault. Give me your other shirt. Roll him on his side. It'll open the airway. Help him breathe. Cinder... What are we going to do? I don't know, I don't- Finding some place to hide would be a good start. Maybe some place your friend can get help. We can't! We just lost both of our pilots and I can't fly! I, I don't know how! I can fly. But, but Scarlet- Look, Thaumaturge Mira will be contacting Luna and sending for reinforcements. The Queen's fleet isn't as far as you might think. You're about to have an army on your tail. But, but nothing. You can't help that other girl. Consider her dead but you might be able to help him. Ship, calculate our location and relative trajectory over Earth. What is the closest place we can get to? Some place not too populated. We could be in Central or North Africa in 17 minutes. Africa. Dr. Erland. You serve the Queen. How can I trust you? I serve my princess. No one else. The floor dropped from under her. He knew. I go take us to Africa. I know a doctor there. The satellite's fall was slow at first. Gradual. As the pull of the satellite's orbit was overpowered by the pull of Earth's gravity, the Thaumaturge had not bothered to tie Thorn securely enough to prevent him from grabbing a knife. He hacked off the sheets tying the girl's arms. She ripped the gag out of her mouth. My feet! Can you untie my hands? The girl sobbed through the binds around her own knees and ankles. My hands! But she was already up, stumbling as the satellite's fall quickened. I'm sorry. The entry procedures... We need to get to the other pod ship and disconnect. You need to untie me! She'll have a security block on the ship and I know the satellite better. Oh no, 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 no! She changed the access code! What are you doing? The entry procedures! The ablative coating should hold while we're passing through the atmosphere, but if I don't set the parachute to release, the whole thing will disintegrate on impact. We're entering the atmosphere now. I have to figure this out fast. I'm in! How long will it take to- Done! Get under the bed! She locked her body into place there, but all the shaking stopped, and suddenly they were free-falling. Pain and brightness exploded in his head, and then everything went black. Cress pulled him unconscious beneath the bed. Uh, the parachute should have opened already! No, no, no! But then a shudder, and a sudden jerk upward. It took ages for the impact to come, and when it did... Uh, we're alive! <laughs> Carswell? M- Mr. Thorne, wake up, please! We're alive! We made it! Uh, uh, as well? Uh, huh? It, it's alright. I'm here. We're safe. Thorn. <sighs> Most people call me Thorn. Or Captain. Of course, Thorn. Uh, Captain. Are you in pain? I feel like my brain's about to leak out through my ears. But otherwise, I feel great. You hit your head pretty hard. I'll untie you. I don't remember being tied together before. Sorry, it's my hair. It gets everywhere. Mistress Sybil never let me have any sharp objects around so I couldn't cut it. If you just roll this way, maybe? Maybe it would help if we turned on the lights. Uh, the lights? Are they voice activated? If the computer system went down in the fall... <sighs> Bates, it must be the middle of the night. Is there a port screen or something we can turn on at least? I I don't understand. 
It would help if we could see. His eyes were wide open, but he was looking blankly past her shoulder. This is the darkest night I've ever seen. We must be somewhere rural. Is it a new moon tonight? No, that doesn't seem right. Must be really overcast. Captain? It's... It isn't dark. I, I can see just fine. Please tell me you're practicing your sarcasm. My sarcasm? Why would I do that? What happened? The last thing I remember is trying to get under the bed. You hit your head on the bed frame. And then we landed a, a little rocky, but that's all. You just hit your head. And that can cause blindness? Maybe it's temporary. Maybe you're in shock. We need to do something about this hair. Give me that knife. Before she could question the logic of giving a knife to a blind man, he was sawing through her hair. Sorry, but it grows back. Thank you. And I'm really sorry. About the blindness? Not your fault. It kind of is my fault. If I hadn't asked you to come rescue me... It's not your fault. You sound like Cinder. She always blames herself for the stupidest things. The war is her fault. Scarlet's grandmother is her fault. I bet she'd take responsibility for the plague if she could. The point is, that witch tried to kill us, but we survived. And we'll find a way to contact the Rampion, and they'll come get us, and we'll be fine. I just need a moment to think, to figure out what we're going to do. Did I hear you say your name was Crescent? Just Cress, please. Captain Carswell Thorne, at your service. Cinder watched breathlessly as they entered Earth's atmosphere over northern Africa in Korean Torfarafra, a small oasis. She didn't leave Wolf's side. She had dressed the wounds as well as she could, but his face was cold and clammy and his heartbeat was growing weaker. Cinder, the lunar is asking where he should land. On the main road. And tell him not to worry about being stealthy. If we draw attention to ourselves, maybe it will draw Dr. Erland out of wherever he's hiding. Finally, the ship landed. Wolf, I'm going to get help. Just stay with us, all right? Just hold on. Back at the wreckage of the satellite. I suppose it's too much to hope that we landed near any sort of civilization. I'm not sure we want to be near civilization. You're a wanted criminal in three earthen countries, and one of the most recognizable men on Earth. I am pretty famous now, aren't I? What do you see out there? <sighs> wow. Cress? It's just... It's beautiful out there. Could you be more specific? The sky is this gorgeous, intense blue color. Oh, good. You've really narrowed it down for me. I'm sorry, it's just... Uh, I think we're in a desert? Cactuses and tumbleweeds? No, just a lot of sand. It's kind of orangish gold with hints of pink and... I see tiny clouds floating above the ground like... like smoke! Piled up in lots of hills? Yes, exactly! And it's beautiful! <laughs> if this is how you feel about a desert, I can't wait until you see your first real tree. Your mind will explode. Do you see anything useful? Palm trees? Watering holes? No, there's nothing else. A desert would not have been my first choice. All right, here's what I need you to do. First, find some way to contact the Rampion. The sooner we get back to my ship, the better. Second, let's see if we can get that door open. We're going to be baked alive in here if the temperature keeps rising like this. The satellite was never installed with external communication abilities. The only chance we had of communicating with your crew was through the decom chip Sybil took. We have to let them know we're not dead and check that they're all right too. I think they're capable of handling two measly lunars, but it would put my mind at ease to know for sure. I'm not sure anything is salvageable. The screens are all destroyed, and judging from the loss of temperature regulation, the generator is... Oh no! Little Cress! Oh, poor little Cress! Um, who's little Cress? Me, when I was ten. She lived in the computer and kept me company, and... Now she's dead. Scarlet did warn me about this. Do we need to bury Little Crest before we can move on? 
Want me to say a few words for her? I'm not crazy! I know she's just a computer, it's just... I programmed her myself and she was the only friend I had. That's all. Hey, I'm not judging. I'm familiar with IT relations. Just wait until you meet our spaceship, she's a riot. Alright, new plan. We have no way of contacting the Rampion, and they have no way of knowing we're alive. We're going to have to try to find some sort of civilization. We need to gather up all the supplies we can carry. Do you have any more blankets? And you'll want a jacket. I don't have a jacket. I never needed one. I have one more dress, but that's it. I do have a few bottles we can fill with water, and plenty of food packs. It's a start. As they prepared, they braided together strands of her chopped hair to make shoes, since she had none. When they opened the door... Lead the way. The entire sky spread out before her. She stumbled back into him. Cress? What happened? What do you see? It's so... big. What's so big? Everything. Earth, the sky... It didn't seem so big from space. Stop it! What is the number one thing people die from in the desert? What? Dehydration. And what does crying do? It dehydrates? Exactly. It's alright. I get that until now, most of your existence has been contained in 200 square meters. In fact, you've shown yourself to be saner than I expected. But I need you to pull yourself together. I am relying on you to be aware and observant and help us find our way out of this. Because if you don't... I don't know about you, but I'm not too fond of the idea of being stranded out here and eaten alive by vultures. So can I depend on you to hold it together? For both of us? Yes, vultures. I understand. Good. Because I need you. And those are not words that I throw around every day. Cress's eyes caught on the moon and she shriveled away from it, but there was nowhere to hide. And besides, from Earth, it seemed so far away. What's wrong? Nothing. I just... I can see Luna, that's all. Wait, and the constellations! What? There's Pegasus, and Pisces, and... Oh, it's Andromeda! What are you... Oh, for navigation. Those are all Northern Hemisphere constellations. That rules out Australia, at least. Wait, I can figure this out. Mm, I think we're in Northern Africa. Could be the Sahara. We can't keep stargazing all night. Let's get a move on. Dr. Erlen stormed toward her when he saw her. You have a lot of explaining to do! Do you have any idea how long I've been waiting for you? Watching the skies, watching the news feeds, watching for any single instance to know whether or not you were alive or you were dead! I need your help! My friend, he's dying. He needs a doctor. I don't know what to do. That man behind you. A lunar guard, I know. And, and Wolf is one of her soldiers. It's a long story, and I'll explain later, but can you please help him? He's been shot twice. He's lost a lot of blood. Doctor, please. 